Hello everyone. The fourth conversation in our series celebrating MS Satyu at 90 discusses The Right to Live, a film made in 2012 on Dhananjoy Chatterjee and the case leading up to his hanging. Today, joining the conversation with MS Satyu is journalist Archana Nathan. Over to you, Archana. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, belated uh, birthday wishes to you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, I'm very happy uh, that I get to speak to you again. Uh, so we're talking about your film, The Right to Live. And uh, uh, I'm calling it a documentary, but we uh, just had a conversation where you said that you don't uh, uh, you don't agree that it, uh, you don't understand why people call it a documentary. So let's start with that. Uh, what would you call the film? Documentary is a thing which will give you a lot of information about something, uh, any subject. But here is a totally a different type of, uh, of film on a man who is um, condemned uh, to death. And it's a film on his viewpoint, whether it was uh, how true it is and how false it is. That's one aspect. But through this film, the whole idea is to discuss much more whether capital punishment is valid. You know, should it be there or should it not be there? This is the debate. Um, actually, you know, in the UN, the Italian delegation came up with this uh, thing and then they wanted a uh, a, a kind of a rule from the UN to all the nations that capital punishment should be abolished. So they brought it up and um, many countries, some of the countries agreed and some countries especially the Islamic countries, uh, they were against it, the whole idea. They said this must be left to each state and, and for them to decide what should be done. But it cannot be a general rule for the entire world. So this was a debate which took place and that in one way, uh, inspired us to make a film on this topic. So uh, there were about 40 or 50 cases in the various prisons in India where people were condemned to death for murders of rape and murder and things like that. I don't know. So most of these kind of uh, uh, cases are there nothing to prove it whether it happened that way or not because nobody will you know outright go and shoot somebody or kill somebody or rape somebody like that in front of other people that's a so it is only circumstantial evidence which leads to the question and a decision is taken. So Dhananjay Chatterjee, on whom I made this first film, I actually wanted to make a series of such films from various places and we had selected some of the cases and there were also two women uh, in some prisons but unfortunately I couldn't get the support from the television channels you know 
to sponsor the thing. So it was not made. Only one film was made on our, on our own, you know, we funded it and then managed the film. Um, one of the uh, reasons uh, I read this in an interview um, uh, that you mentioned that you thought uh, it would be easy to uh, sort of approach uh, the West Bengal government or to take this case particularly for discussion because uh, you maybe had friends there and but then that didn't turn out the way it did because you had to wait for like close to six months for permission. Yeah, because you know what happened was and uh, I have a lot of friends in the um, earlier government, you know, in the CPM was uh, running uh, West Bengal at that time. So I approached them. I thought it would be easy to get permission to go in. But then they said um, um, they, they, they objected to it, um, to allow me to go to um, the inside the prison and then interview uh, Dhananjaya. Uh, because the conditions of the prison is very bad. So they didn't want that kind of a, you know, atmosphere to be shown to the public and says, so they said, so we will not allow it. But then we took it up, went to the Supreme Court um, and then um, made a case against the government of West Bengal. And then we got a kind of a decision in our favor. And the Supreme Court said, every convict has a right to the media and the media has a right to a convict. And this kind of a thing happened. And so they were, they had to allow after that. So, and this is perhaps for the first time a person who was in a solitary cell for nearly 13 years, you know, who has been interviewed by the media. So um, it's, a, it's a very rare uh, case. When you interviewed him, he had spent about uh, four years in the jail already? Thirteen years. Right. Okay. So I, because uh, from what I read, I thought uh, the Supreme Court said you have to wait to air the film or, uh, until the president uh, uh, reads out the mercy or uh, has a chance to consider the mercy petition. Yeah, a number of presidents um, already had rejected um, and some did not take uh, a decision. And ultimately it came to Abdul Karam and he was president of India. Uh, in this case went up to him and then he said no. Uh, he, that mercy petition was uh, not uh, honored. And then the, the hanging was confirmed. And that's how he Dhananjay, after serving already 13 years, you know, 14 years is the maximum that one has to go in, uh, in the jail and then he gets a parole. But uh, he had spent 13 years, and, uh, but he, his mercy petition did not work. Um, and he, sorry, he was yeah. Then he was hanged. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you know, after nearly 25 years in India, nobody had been hung. So Dharanjay was the very first one. Uh, in, in terms of uh, difficulties to uh, shoot this film, not just uh, the government, but also I understand that the family of uh, Dhananjay, they were initially reluctant. You did not, uh, get, I mean, the victims, uh, uh, parents were not... Uh, uh, they were not ready in the beginning, but later on when the news came in the papers and uh, um, 
then they realized that it is uh, not against them. And in fact, it was uh, more sympathetic towards the uh, Dhananjaya's cause. And uh, they agreed. And I went to the village for the second time. The first time when I went, I couldn't get the interviews of the parents and uh, the two sisters and brothers. I, I couldn't. Because, you know, in a punishment to a person like Dhananjay is not a punishment for only him. It becomes a punishment to even others who are not involved in the whole case, like his family, it's a punishment to them also, which seems very unfair. Hmm? Because they are not responsible for what their son has done or, or is accused of what he had done. So, so it became a punishment to the entire family. And in many ways, you know, the, even the society around is not prepared to accept. And uh, nobody is there to marry these girls. You know, nobody is there to give employment to the other brothers. And the father, who owned a little bit of land, he had to sell to pay the lawyers. So he almost sold every bit of his land. Nearly, maybe nearly seven acres he had. And he's a Brahmin Pujari and earns very little. So, in the whole th thing is very touching. And then I wanted to find out from the judiciary and the people who deal with the laws of the country, many advocates and criminal advocates and, and their opinion about whether there should be capital punishment or not. So I have a series of interviews um, in which you come to understand how the judiciary thinks also. Yeah, I can see that uh, uh, you've really gone to as many people as possible and very renowned names as well in that, uh, in terms of understanding the, the pro and against uh, debate. And a lot of that we still uh, uh, are debating today as well. Uh, but before we come to that, um, how easy or difficult was it to talk to Dhananjoy himself? Uh, did What was his, um, because it can also be uh, a little um, uh, tricky in terms of uh, giving him, uh, what did he expect of this film's outcome? What did you tell him? What was the conversation with him? No, he agreed immediately for the interview and uh, we were, when we went with the camera uh, inside a prison, you know, and uh, he put, put up his argument and then his contention was that a whole lot of falsehood was imposed on him and uh, he was not uh, in any way responsible for the uh, death of the girl. So, and his arguments were there, but then the prosecution uh, did not call for certain people, did not question them, you know, and that way, we really don't know why this thing happened. 
there was one other person who used to come in a red Maruti car and who would always meet this girl in her house when the mother was away and there was no one else in the house. The, the father was and would be in, at his business place. And the mother was away in, in the temple. Swami in Narayan temple in, just nearby. So at that time he used to visit this girl. And the police never brought that man uh, to the court or anywhere near. So Dhananjaya's contention was that that man has paid the police uh, so that he is not brought in. So there can be many stories, maybe there was an affair between the girl and him, you know, and she might have uh, become even pregnant and she, she wanted to have the baby, you know, but he wanted it to be aborted. So a lot of things like this were behind the whole story, but that never came up. Even in, in the court, it didn't come. It was hushed up. And that is the version Dhananjay had given us. So it's very difficult to say whether it is, uh, whether he is right or not, whether he was telling us the truth or not. It's very difficult to say. But the question is whether a welfare state should have the right to take away somebody's life. No matter what kind of a crime, how severe a crime is committed. This is the question. It's not about Dhananjaya alone. It is a, only one example was taken. But the whole thing is whether we should support capital punishment or not, whether the state has a right to take away somebody's life. That is the question. So even the title says it's a right to live. As per our constitution, we are all entitled to a right to live. Um, as a filmmaker, how, uh, I mean, uh, with all with all the inputs that uh, Dhananjay himself gave, the version that he gave, then you have the victim side and the prosecution side of the story. Um, I can see that you've already uh, talked about, you know, you can't make a decision uh, as to who's right, who's wrong, obviously. But as a filmmaker, where do you draw the line as to what you will present? How, how do you manage a balance? Or is it not required to have that uh, balance. Do you take? Do you also bring in your own stance uh, in a film like this? Naturally, I have a, an opinion about this. I am personally against uh, capital punishment, but as per constitution, it's allowed. So, I. If I question anything, I'm questioning the constitution, you know. And do we have to rethink about our constitution, bring about an amendment uh, regarding this? I mean, that is the basis on which the whole uh, film is made. And we, as I as a director and my other colleague who, who supported the whole thing, um, Amit Rai, uh, we were against giving this right to a state to take away somebody's life. Coming to the title, Right to Live, 
there's a portion in the film where uh, a lawyer uh, in his argument says that you not about right to live it's about uh, the state administering justice it's not taking away the right so this whole uh, uh, argument about uh, right to live whether the state state has a right to take it away or this idea of justice uh, we hear it time and again about collective conscience retributive justice versus um, you know rarest of rare cases so we must give there must be justice uh, <laughs> how do you settle or uh, how do you deal with these arguments in uh, in a in the through the medium of a film uh, i know that you uh, uh talk to both sides of the debate but uh, considering your own stance i'm coming back to the idea of balance and coming back to the idea of uh, you know deciding something or does the film just lay it all out and leave it for the uh, for the watch uh, the audience to make up their mind yeah this is a question of everyone has to uh, debate about it so recently you know uh, these four people who were sentenced in the nirbhaya case you see now whether it is justified or not is a question for the family which uh, lost their daughter the nirbhaya case what is it did they get anything out of it or just a satisfaction that justice was done but because the girl was raped and killed but everyone knew so how do they react it but there are lots of people who are waiting and they argued and the, the press also published quite a lot about uh, people's opinion and the why so much delays there you know and how they are trying to protect these people and they took the loopholes in the law and each one you know tried to save themselves from the uh hanging or at least they couldn't save it but then they delayed the whole thing which happened in nirbhaya's case but there have been cases other cases like uh, the assassination of the for example of mrs gandhi you know where it was very clear and the person who was a security guard uh, was involved in it and everyone knew about it that was an open murder case on that kind of uh, case, assassination the decision can be taken much easier but in circumstantial evidence it's always a dicey thing it, it is a, whether justice was done or not and even taking our accepting the constitution of the country you know so such cases have happened billa ranga case is there you know and this assassination of mrs gandhi is there but um, and then afterwards we had a case uh, against the um rajiv gandhi when he was blown off by the ltt member there that was a suicidal bombing where the victim is no more i mean the person who really caused the havoc or herself not there she was also destroyed um you say that uh, even with 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 such debates and with uh, with these kind of discussions i would call this a documentary why why are you still uh, reluctant to call it that what would you call it otherwise if you if you if you had to categorize uh, right to live as uh, a, a genre it's, it's just a short film you know 
it is uh, not a fiction but a, of a reality of an incident which happened in this country and here it is a question of questioning the constitution of india you know right so it is not a documentation of something right right okay right in terms of um what did you hope to achieve when you made the film at that time uh, because you know you there was a the condition that you cannot air that film until uh, the decision was made but uh, and you you agreed to that condition um so, but what did you hope uh, eventually so when you started out you wanted to sort of put this out there so that the discussion is is done or uh, is it happens over capital punishment but what what did you hope to achieve through a film like this i mean what can you achieve through a film you can only achieve a certain amount of debate in certain amount of rethinking and the possibly an amendment in the constitution of india because uh, the whole purpose of making a film is, is that and uh, even in a, even if i had made a fiction film i could question it but here was a real case and that reality uh, makes it stronger and did ultimately dhananjay whether he committed the crime or not deserve such a punishment and almost a double punishment because he had already served 13 years in the jail and then he was hanged so i don't know in a civilized world i mean this kind of crimes do take place and um, for some momentary you know decision people make and then they commit crimes like this it's not only uh, rape cases it's also other kinds of murders which take place the killing i mean a capital punishment is it a deterrent for others it has never been proved it has never been a deterrent this kind of crime goes on and every day we read about it and people always think they can commit the crime and escape you know but that sometimes they get caught and sometimes they don't but it needs to rethink i think about this right given to our courts to decide about the life of a citizen whether the citizen has a greater right to live or not right um even in the film uh, there is uh, uh, i think uh, justice sachar uh, he says that uh, the judges who gave the verdict uh, in dhananjay's case they themselves were uh, uh, they believed in the abolition of uh, capital punishment but since uh, the law is such that uh, you can't really uh, do much else uh, i'm coming back to the question of um, you know the power of a film uh, in such uh in such issues and uh, uh the the idealism with which a filmmaker makes a film and then we put it out there um how do you think your film the right to live has traveled uh, over the years it seems for me it seems as relevant today all the debates all the questions we are still asking that of uh, this thing but when you make it at that particular time um with regard to decisions you take about who to interview um how much of it should be reconstruction how much of it do you just 
place the camera and have a conversation with uh, with your interviewee uh, what are the different sort of uh, things in your mind when you're making a film like this especially considering this will remain in public domain uh, years to come you see unfortunately in india we don't have uh, uh, very many avenues to exhibit these kind of films so a filmmaker like me or who spends one's own money or a friend's money and make a film ultimately we have only the films division to buy it and the films division in india is owned by the government so whether this government is open about it you know or they would like to have this right to eliminate people you know so this question arises and so when we gave the film to the films division because we wanted to recover our investment in the whole thing and that okay we we got back the money that we had put in but the purpose of the film is not served because when the so many cases are happening the public exhibition should have been there a film like this should be should have been used you know in the nirbhaya case itself for example it would have been relevant at that time if they had shown the film widely but the films division did not do it because it's a state run organization so it will support whatever the state's constitution is and so they just kept it with them but here and there in private screenings the film gets shown i mean today even if the bic is showing the film is a, it is a their decision to do it you know and i am happy that they have taken this bold step and it is a private club a cultural uh, unit in india which has taken up there have been some others who have requested for the print and they have shown in small circles the film and in some universities they have shown you know some film clubs have shown it because there it's not a question of commercialization you know right um one of the things i'd asked you just now was also about the form of the film that is uh, you it seems deliberate to keep it simple in terms of just uh, point the camera at the in- and have a series of cuts between the interviewees uh, some saying debating about the same point uh, pro and against but it seems a pretty uh, straightforward sort of a form that you've used while shooting zooming in slowly or zooming out slowly uh very uh you know tv style uh, sort of a traditional tv style uh, sort of a documentary was that a conscious choice or was that not something that uh, i mean no no a- no it was uh, well thought of that way uh, the way to project it and then we had a little bit of uh, the enactment also we we had dhananjay as a character or the girl as a character you know and they, that is fictitious but we had to show some representation of that and so it's a, it's a, it's like a docu drama right. in a docu drama technique we have to use uh, actors and uh, who are not may not be real right. or nearly real they have to look i mean the same dhananjay's character was played by a calcutta actor who looked somewhat like him right it's like making a 
have a biopic. You know, if you have seen a film on MS Dhoni, the actor who acted that doesn't really, you know, look like Dhoni, nor can he play like Dhoni. Right. You know, it's fake. Right, right. To that extent, it is fake. Right. Uh, but also, the, uh, it's also true that the large chunk of the film is focused on the discussion. While Dhananjay's case is sort uh, of an entry point into the debate. It's basically those people who are dealing with law and the judiciary. And even those people who might have condemned him to death because of the arguments and the prosecution, they themselves personally may not agree with the decision. And that's exactly what has happened. Some of the people, some judges, were retired judges who have spoken about, right. and, you know, they are against the whole thing. But then, when they're in, when they're doing the job, they have to just follow the rules. It's not a personal thing. A judgment of this kind in a court is not a personal thing. It, it cannot be subjective. It has to follow the rules of the nation. Right. I always wonder uh, about uh, such subjects and uh, uh, the form of, uh, I mean, the, the tool of the camera. Um, in any interview, uh, you want your interviewee to be able to be free enough to open up um, how does a filmmaker uh, navigate this challenge of having this camera which automatically makes sure that the interviewee sort of becomes a little rigid or like becomes very conscious? As a filmmaker, I've asked you this in other, uh, other contexts as well earlier in my previous interview. Well, um, how do you a, arrive at that balance? Especially Dhananjay's father, for instance. Uh, it, you know, it's a very heart-rending tale. I mean, it's very difficult to sit through those portions because of you see the agony on his face. But at the same time, you're there with the camera, uh, you know, trying to capture that moment. How would you navigate this challenge? You're asking me about my profession. <laughs> yeah. There much. are tricks. <laughs> <laughs> you have to learn how to do these things. Make the person comfortable enough in front of the camera and not conscious. And that is the job of a director. You know, it is a filmmaker who can handle it. In uh, many of my films, even my <clears throat> feature films, I have used uh, people on the streets, actual people, and they become actors for that particular scene. And they don't even know that they're acting. So these are kind of uh, techniques which you have to learn uh, if you are a filmmaker and you want to deal every time. You see, you don't recreate a whole lot of a crowd scene and have so many extras brought in who are, who are professionals or, you know, as junior artists and then enact the whole thing. It's not necessary. In my films like Bara or in Garam Hawa or in Kaneshwar Rama and uh, in Calcutta, I've shot a film um, where I introduced uh, uh, Anil Kapoor uh, as a, an actor in in a Hindi movie, uh, Kaha Se Guzar Gaya. So there were political rallies which used to be in, going on and I used some shots which I sh had taken of Mrs. Gandhi making a uh, spe election speech and supporting a particular person. And then I actually had shot it and I used it in the film. Then I had Jyoti Basu you know, addressing a huge rally at this Maidan. Uh, and, uh, and there Anil Kapoor is around. My actor is running around 
in 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 the actual rally right. you know and he is not conscious about it right right the camera is uh, somewhere there are lots of cameras when such rallies took place because there are news people right who come in the media is there so you are you become a part of that media in in a way right and um, i have even used mrs gandhi's voice and jyoti basu's voice in the film right 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 so th these are some um, techniques sometimes even in lati charge a real lati charge is used in in kahan kahan se i've shown right. that and the students are beaten really beaten right um finally i think uh, since <coughs> the I, i remember reading again in an interview about uh, you know the topic of capital punishment was something that you wanted to uh, do a film about um, also because you'd seen a, a 1970s film about uh, a sanjeev kumar film about uh, the conditions in the jail the gallows this was a topic that you wanted to uh, uh, sort of address um so what i'm what i'm trying to ask is you've had you've sort of been um, you've approached the topic uh, you you've made a film about this back in uh, 2012 but the by the idea of this the subject itself hasn't we haven't resolved it the debate still goes on we still have cases the so far as a concluding sort of a uh stance that you want to take right now in this interview if you were to talk about what you feel about uh you know what can be done uh, should the debate be renewed should we continue should there be a, is it time for a decision to be taken yeah i am personally as i said earlier itself that i'm against giving the state the right to kill somebody and it can be uh hanging a capital punishment like this or it can be encounter deaths there are lots of people being killed by the police do they have the right they create the whole thing and have an encounter and kill kill away people whom they don't want to protect the state should protect a, a pe the people and the welfare state has a it's duty bound to protect but that is not happening they have so many ways the state you know wants this power to take away somebody's life to kill somebody you know who who opposes so what is the difference if during the war the nazis you know killed so many jews or during the uh, october revolution in soviet russia stalin killed equal number of uh, people right. who opposed you see so these are larger questions whether this right should be there for any state for any politician or any administration right so this debate must go on and something ultimately will emerge opinions of people are much more important and that is the reason to make films like this what format you use whether it is a documentary as you say or a short film or a fic fiction film right you know it can be any any format right it can be just a debate you know right great uh, thank you so much for this uh, for this conversation uh, and uh, it, i think it's it's an important film and i'm glad i got to talk to you about it thank you so much thank you